our next guest. We'll go from one right to the other. Mark Hoffman, welcome. Sir. Good to see you again. Mark, I haven't seen you in <coughs> hours. How are you? <laughs> Hanging in there, doing all right. <laughs> How are you guys doing? I know it's a long day for you. Yeah, Doing absolutely. well. We're into hour three. Right? Seven D, I don't know. I don't know. What, it all, it seven, all runs seven together. Seven of ten, three of today. So. Uh, oh, yeah. so tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been doing um, business continuity and crisis management for 20 plus years. Sometimes you don't like to count the years anymore, but uh, <laughs> I've been doing it a long time. Um, got a uh, consulting practice uh, just north of Toronto, not too far from your neck of the woods there, yeah, Alex. That's right. And uh, first time, though, ever at DRJ. <clears throat> so, really? Yeah. Yeah, we, that's why I wanted to, to talk to you about that. Uh, a lot of people who come to a conference are like, oh, I've been here for 38 years. And right. back before there was electricity, this is your, <laughs> you know, your first DRJ conference. So we'd love to get, and I know you've been to BCI World and Continuity and Resilience Today and uh, Well-Traveled. We'd love to get your thoughts and insights, what you're seeing as a noob your first time yeah. at DRJ. Well, it's interesting because... Um... I think that the industry is still coming back a little bit post COVID, right? So I still don't think we're back to maybe the complete buzz of, of what this used to be, but uh, it, there are a lot of people here. It, I have, look, let me, you and I are very similar in that we're somewhat introverted and you don't necessarily yes. want to just throw us in the middle of a room and let us mingle. Yep. That's us. Yeah. Uh, and so I know I, I can't help it, but that's the, the way it is. introverted podcast hosts i know that, yeah so exactly right you're like you both broadcast thousands of hours we're like oh i'm introverted that's right but it's different when you walk into a room and so there was a little bit of that apprehension when i first got here uh then you break the ice and it's all good and uh, i have met some very very interesting people um and what i really like about it is you know i've been doing this a long time and um what really jumped out at me for this week has been the fact that I don't care how long you've been doing this, you can still learn something. And uh, I've been to a number of sessions where uh, I've learned some techniques on dealing with things. I've learned some thoughts. I've learned some ideas. And what I'm finding is I'm not really sleeping very well because what happens is I close my eyes and I'm just bombarded with a whole bunch of ideas of things that I have to go try to do. So what are some of the things then that kind of uh, are making you stay awake at night, I guess? That, well, that you've realized like, wow, hey, that's great. Well, some of them are for my own business. Like I get some ideas uh, as, a, as a consultant. Um, we are known to borrow or leverage ideas from things that we see. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> it's known to happen. Uh, and so uh, I'll hear somebody talk about something and I'm like, well, that makes a lot of sense. And it's, uh, it's something that I would like to, to try to do. Um, as far as things related to the resilience think tank, for example, I've had some, I've met some people and I'm like, I know if I could get together with you and we could collaborate, cause that's what the resilience think tank is all about. It's a collaboration body. Uh, and I've been telling people, uh, about it all week where instead of it being sort of a top down, we shall teach you this. It's a horizontal learning platform where you're going to teach me something. James is going to learn something from me. You're going to share information. We're going to, we're going to teach each other. And so a lot of that has come to light for me this week. I'm meeting different people from different backgrounds. I met a woman today who, before she was into business continuity and resilience, she was a police officer. And we talked about some of that, you know, her background and how that transferred into what she was doing. So I get a lot of these different ideas. I was in a session yesterday with uh, Shane Matthew yep, yep. Uh, and uh, he was talking about AI and I have uh, a whole bunch of things that I want to uh, start leveraging in that. And, uh, you know, the, the, the keynote uh, on Monday with Heidi was fantastic. Got some good techniques there. So yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of things at the end of the day, when you reflect on it, you're like, yeah, this was relevant to me. I think that's important for people that e even those that have been around for a year or two uh, that we continue to learn because we're constantly talking about mm. change and how our business uh, business environments are changing and how the world is changing and all the impacts we experience are changing. We have to change ourselves as well and continue to learn to be able to adapt to that. Yeah. I, I have a presentation coming up in London in a few weeks and we're going to be talking about the future uh, of resilience. And there's a quote that I have in that presentation 
that I'm not going to get right right now because I didn't know you were going to ask me that. <laughs> but the quote, uh, to paraphrase it, is basically the biggest crisis is that when we approach difficulty using yesterday's logic, we have to continue to evolve in our techniques, our approach, our understanding. We have to grow. We have to we have to look at the evolving threats. What are the different things that are that we need to be aware of? What do we need to be paying attention to? And uh, if you're not looking at things like climate change and supply chain and cyber and some of the other things that are out there, or the opportunities, but also the threats of AI and some of the things that are involved in that, you got to be thinking about those things. Yeah. Oh, just totally unrelated. I was wondering if you found a good chicken parm yet Not in at Phoenix. All. <laughs> so I'm just going to go way off script. The, the funny thing is, is I've, I've been here 55, 60 hours and I haven't paid for a single meal yet. So it's uh, the DRJ did a really good job <laughs> with feeding us no chicken parm. Um, it's still early. It's still early, but there's <laughs> there's a lot of good stuff here. The the one you're doing in a couple of weeks, sorry, uh, going to be a BCI? BCI yes. World, yeah. Oh, great. Well, then I'll see you there because I'll be there as well. So, nice. Excellent. Yeah. So where do you see things going now? Now that you're the first time here at DRJ, you've met so many different people that may not be at these other conferences. Mm-hmm. Where do you see uh, us going forward? Because we've talked about burnout and uh, a lot of other things, poly crises. Where do you think mm-hmm. us now, you know, where we should be positioning ourselves and going forward? Do you mean us, those of us in this industry? Yeah, industry now. Yeah. <clears throat> well, the very first thing is we better be listening to the next generation of people who are coming into the industry. We better be hearing the energy and the thoughts and the ideas that they're bringing. Uh, if we're going to sit here and, and be the staunchy old dudes, not so much you, but nah. some of us are, uh, I'm not staunchy, but I'm starting to get old or I'm starting to feel old. <laughs> if, if, you know, but seriously, those of us who've been doing it for 20, 25, 30 years, and there, and there are plenty of us, if we think, and it goes back to kind of the last answer, if we think we're going to just continue to do things the way we've always done it, we're going to get passed over. And there's a next generation of people who are coming at it very good at technology. Shane said this yesterday. He goes, AI is not going to take our jobs from us, but the people who know how to use AI are. And so we need to be embracing that. We need to be willing to, uh, again, look at those emerging threats and be willing to incorporate things into our programs that we've never thought of before because we've never had to think of them before. And if that doesn't excite you, then maybe you are burned out and maybe it's time for a change. But as far as I'm concerned, as long as I'm doing this, I'm going to be looking to learn from somebody. So if we're doing that, let's say we are doing that ourselves, how do we get the leadership to understand that? that because leadership always wants, you have your program, good, you're done. Well, you're never done. But there's never, you're never done. Agreed. Right. But unfortunately, leadership quite often thinks we're along resilient that lines. now. Yeah, yeah we yeah we oh. are we are this now. We have that now. But you know, to your point, we have to keep adapting and changing. So how do you get them to do the same thing? I think the secret there is to leverage whatever crisis you can find, whatever threat, whatever keeps them up at night. You better be leveraging that and becoming part of the solution for them. It's one thing to be able to say, oh, man, we should be worried about cyber, you know, cyber. Yeah, it's a problem. But if you can come back to that leadership and say, listen, um, we've put together a pretty effective cyber response strategy. We've collaborated with the stakeholders in the organization. We've worked with those technical guys. We've worked with legal. We've worked with the comms team. We have a pretty good idea of what we can do. And you know what? Let's run an exercise and let's find out just how good it is. And if it's not good enough, we'll make it better. And I think what you do is it's all about, again, collaboration. And it's collaborating with the leaders, having that relationship with the leaders, but yeah. leveraging whatever those threats are that are scaring them. And, you know, for example, if it's weather related or if it's a supply chain issue or whatever it is, uh, even a near miss, uh, somebody said it, I don't know, you know, who, who came up with this, but you never let a good crisis go to waste. Yeah. I like that quote. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard it a few times. Oh, speaking of near miss, your, your Buffalo Bills 
<laughs> lost in heartbreaking fashion last night. Am I allowed to mention that? Well, you can mention it all you want. So here's the problem. <laughs> here's the, so here's the problem. And this, we, you talked about poly crises, right? Compound bad things happening. So um, I'm in, first of all, the Bills are my team. They lost. That sucks. I'm in a fantasy football league where the Bills kicked a late field goal. That sucked because they lost anyhow, and that field goal cost me my fantasy game. Uh, so, yeah, it was just a, a bad night all around. Yeah. <laughs> How'd your quarterback do yesterday? Uh, he was uh, – he didn't throw any interceptions at all. <laughs> uh, no, but we found we found out the reason I brought that up today, I didn't realize so Cheyenne Marling, yeah. very big Green Bay Packers fan. Really? I did not know until we went on the air and she was talking football, and then I brought it up on the air and her eyes went wide. So then I was like, I wonder how many other people that we're talking to today are football people. And I have no idea. You know what we could do? We could have a huge uh, resilience industry football pool. (laughs) (laughs) I I wouldn't do very good about that. Alex is crying on the inside right now. He's not an American football no, not even fan Canadian football all. fan. Did, yeah, why not? Rugby, okay. Nobody's but, a know. Canadian football fan. No, I was going to no. say the CFL. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't worry about I know about a few that. people who would you know, go crazy well, over that. They, they can email us and complain. <laughs> now, if that's the only complaint two we of them. get today, yeah. I'll take it. That's right. <laughs> so. Yeah, all two, of the, all, all two of those fans. You know? <laughs> so, Mark, um, I'm, I'm curious because I know it's your first time here. What actually made you decide to come here for the first time? <laughs> Well, um, there's a couple of things. So first of all, Lisa Jones and I, um, and by the way, if you ever walk down the hall at DRJ with Lisa, you become invisible. Uh, everyone, <laughs> very famous. everyone here knows Lisa. Uh, we'll be walking, you know, side by side and everybody will be like, hi, Lisa, hi, Lisa, hi, Lisa. And I'm like, okay, apparently <laughs> I'm not here. Uh, but no, we had submitted uh, uh, to speak. Uh, and, uh, unfortunately we weren't selected. I like to blame Lisa for that. Uh, I thought if, if I was just on the ticket by myself, perhaps they would have selected me, but apparently not. Um, uh, <laughs> but no, they had asked us to come out as uh, backups just in case somebody couldn't make it. So we came for that. Um, and then we also came to be for the first time for the four of us as the resilience think tank to be together in the same space all at once. And it's like, uh, getting the Beatles together. It was really, really cool to have everybody together for that. So I should expect a version of She Loves You or something from the four of you later? Or? Yes. Well, yesterday I sat down at the piano. I saw that. Yeah. And I said Lisa's going to sing a song and she backed out of it. But <laughs> I don't know why she's so famous. I mean, she didn't even sing. <laughs> we have that on tape now, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, thanks for stopping by, Mark. It's great for you to stop by and good to see you again. You know, I know we'll see you in a couple of months or a couple of weeks, actually, it seems feels like. Uh, yeah, I think um, it's like six or seven weeks. From yeah, now. We will and also see you in Toronto. In Toronto, Continuity Resilience Today, where I'm also in the bullpen warming up. Okay. Um, yeah, I got a call from them. They said, hey, would you uh, be willing to, to be sort of a backup on that? Yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, if he makes the call to the bullpen for the right-hander, I'm ready to come in, throw a few innings, and we'll go from there. Uh, both oh. Alex and I are speaking. Yeah, at that so, conference. So for the right price, I can feign illness or sleep through my alarm clock or slash the tires of one of the other speakers. No, that's all right. We give can, someone uh, food poisoning or, you know, I don't know how aggressive you want to go. No, but. I'm all right. I'm very content to uh, wait for my time. And uh, it's all good. And uh, in the meantime, keep listening to the podcast. Can I can I mention the podcast? You can plug you can plug you your yeah. you can plug it. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to do I'm going to do two things here before I go. So first of all, the Resilient Journey podcast. We just re- released our hundredth episode yesterday, Congratulations. which I'm massively proud of. A hundred episodes is pretty cool. I mean, you know how hard that is to yep. to put that kind of stuff together. Yesterday's episode was a guy who was on the 39th floor of Tower One on September 11th, uh, and he tells his story of the evacuation of that building, which is very inspirational and educational. So there's that. And then, of course, don't forget the Resilience Think Tank. We just launched membership last week, uh, and you can talk to us about that. Um, And again, what I really like about the Resilience Think Tank is this whole idea of horizontal learning. Don't expect it where, I mean, there will be, there are workshops and webinars and different meetings and things like that. But there's also opportunity for, again, you to come in with your expertise and let me learn from you and that horizontal cross learning. Um, And it's, 
you know, a great value, great way to learn, great way to build your career and your network. Well, great. I look forward to seeing well, both of you uh, in just a few weeks, actually, because it's not far yeah. till CRT. Yeah, so, it'll still be warm in Toronto then. Well, Compared not necessarily. Phoenix? Last year, <laughs> it snowed on the second day, if it you did. recall. I remember that. I remember that. No, and it won't be Phoenix warm. No, it won't be Phoenix warm. Yeah. No. But it, it'll be warm from a Canadian perspective. Put it that way. <laughs> and if, if, Mark, if people want to learn more about your consulting company or your podcast or the think tank, what's a, what's a good way to... Yeah, the best way to, to, to reach out to me would probably be through LinkedIn. Mark Hoffman, uh, I'm on LinkedIn and pretty easy to find. Also fairly active when it comes to that. Usually uh, things related to the podcast or the Resilience Think Tank. Or when I come to a conference like this, I'm always taking a silly video. I made a really nice putt yesterday, and that's on video. I, uh, you sure? Oh, you I didn't saw that one. No, you didn't keep watching. Oh, really? Oh, they, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I, the, they they went and retrieved the ball, and I, something <laughs> happened. It was a technical <laughs> glitch with the first putt. It wasn't my fault. And then we had, <laughs> and then they they had me repot, and it went right in the hole. It was it was perfect. It was beautiful. You should have seen it. <laughs> I was watching that. I was going, he's going to watch. He's going to win this. And then yeah. I started chuckling, going, oops. <laughs> well, so to be fair, I missed the first putt badly, like badly. But the, the second one, I nailed it right in the middle. It was never a doubt. Oh, you would have done better than I, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, Mark, thanks for stopping by. And I appreciate I thought you brought me vodka. It's not. But I do appreciate <laughs> the hot water for my next tea. So thank you very you much. You're very that. welcome. Hey, guys, thanks for having me. Thanks for the thanks work for you're doing. By. It's good to see you. Good to see thanks, you, Mark. and we'll see you actually in a couple of weeks. All right, I man. will see you in two hours. Yeah, thanks. looking yeah. forward to it. <laughs> yeah, you guys are having dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have to leave? This was fun. Uh, oh, we're going you... off the air for ten minutes. You're gonna so, make yeah. me leave? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was, uh, I was trying to wrap up, Alex. <laughs> oh well. Okay. Mark's leaving us, but uh, we are actually at the end of our uh, third hour. So we, we are at be... the end of our yeah. third hour. That's... Brought to you by Stone Road. Don't yeah. forget our sponsor, <laughs> Alex. Oh, yeah, this yeah. hour was brought to you by Stone Road, the firm aiming to help organizations prepare for, respond to, and overcome adverse situations. Thank you, Stone Road. Thanks, Stone Road. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Michelle. And thanks, James. We will be back in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. If you like that video, thumbs up. If you didn't like that video, thumbs down. But leave me a message and let me know your thoughts. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. And in the meantime, stay prepared, everybody.